Well, hello everybody, this is Dr. Charles C. Lucas. I am the very proud and elated Senior Pastor of Promise Land Ministries. Welcome to another broadcast of the Promise Land Ministries Network. And guess what? Beautiful Peachtree Corners, Georgia. Amen. We're super excited about how God's already on me. I'm super excited about um, the message. Guess what? Before we get started, hey, look, we are all fully in YouTube now. So, hey, look, share and subscribe. I can tell. Share and subscribe, y'all. I love you. We're excited about where the, where the ministry is going. You know, First Lady and I, in the, in, in, in the time to come, we'll share very exciting um, news about the progress of, our, of the ministry. And so just stick with us. Share and subscribe. Amen. This is the place to be. Amen. And get in now. Right? The, the word, while the Word of God is rich. Right? Well, we can focus and just give you the Word of God. Amen. Most of you have got our personal numbers. Call for prayer. Ask for prayer. We're available for that. Yeah. Amen. And then also give. Continue to give to the ministry. Amen. But guess what? If you don't, we're going to still go and God will still bless you mm -hmm. because guess what? His grace. Amen. But guess what? Give not be out of compulsion, the Bible says, for God loves a what? Chill forgiver. Amen. So give as the Spirit leads you. We'd love for you to give like the 10 percent. But but guess what? Now, let God lay on your heart what it is. Amen. Because guess what? We all have to grow. Amen. You know, A amen. So what are you doing? <laughs> guess what? We trust God to give and God has been faithful to us. Amen. And guess what? he's going to be faithful to you, too. Amen. amen. So continue to do that. Amen. So let's go ahead and get into that. Hey, welcome new new uh, viewers. Welcome newcomers. Welcome new members. Welcome people who've been giving their life to Christ and been studying. Brother Doug, I see you out there, man, uh, uh, still fighting. Tammy, Tasha, I see you out there still fighting and standing. Amen. We thank you for the faithful here. You know, Don Jr. Kill, the media team. Let's give them, give them some, you know. Don't give them too much now because they, they might go Hollywood on you. know. You have to kind of. You know, <laughs> rain that stuff in, but we the excellent job that they do with us, bringing their ministry to the next level. So all the things that you see, the 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 the, the scriptures and everything, that's because of their hard work and their faithfulness. Amen. Yes, so let's go ahead and get into the Word of God. I'm so excited, and then as we begin to pray, and let's look to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you, and I feel your presence here already, staring, Lord God. And Father God, we come. And we just, we just, we just honor you, Lord God, where we ask you for focus that none of, none of us and all of you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And guess what? As we get started, look, you know how we do it, right? Hey, hey, look, have your Bible, bang, boom, have your uh, notepad, boom, have your uh, uh, pen, boom, have your highlighter, boom, amen. I see you, baby. I see you, Satavia, you know. Got the fam showing up here. And so guess what now? And so we can get started with the word of God. Why do we do that? Why? Because guess what? Because God want to speak to you. Amen. And guess what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's got great things for you, but he's got to build your foundation. Even if it's in business, even if it's a, a hair salon, even if it's all that, guess what? He wants to build your faith foundation so the enemy can't take it. So guess what? When, when you have concerns about payroll, you can always say, my God shall supply all my needs. Why? Because we the pastor taught us that. We got that right. I got that in my notes, devil. You can't say it to me. I know he's going to take care of my needs. Amen? Yeah. Right? And when you know the word, there's certain things the devil can't chase you off of. Amen. Why ain't it happening for me yet? Why is not my dreams? Happening? Why don't I have a boy ass? It's not because God doesn't love you. God's trying to protect you yeah. because you got to have enough word in you because the devil, anything that God gives you, the devil is going to come forward. Why? Because it's because God don't want you. I mean, the devil don't want you going around showing proof that God is real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at my new husband. Look at my new uh, car. Look at my salon doing well. Look, and you at the salon preaching to people. The devil going to go crazy. Right? Yeah. So you got to have word because he's going to come and try to take it. Why? You know? And so you got to say, no, I got to be, you know, I, I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be married to so-and-so. I'm supposed to be here. So he don't chase you off your blessing. Amen? So that's why you're here. That's why you take the notes. When you're taking notes, you're saying, I'm, pre I'm getting prepared to when God takes me to a place, I'm going to stay. Hmm? Huh? Like them Jordans to tell you again, things is tight. But anyway, right? And so, so they bad now. Let me focus. <laughs> That's some online shit. She ain't get them off the rack. Man, <laughs> life is good. <laughs> That's why I check y'all ties and record. Y'all do y'all y'all too uh, y'all too short to be. I'm looking at you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let me focus right. 
I'll be sharp up in here, man. You know, that threw me off for a minute. Right. <laughs> so let me get back. So, so that's it, right? So look, God wants, see, God wants you ready, right? Because he wants you to keep it. And so when the devil come, he going to come now because guess what? He don't want you at the, at the view shop. Girl, you know, look what the Lord did for me. You know, and he don't want that, right? So he going to come, he going to come for you. So you got to have some words saying, no, 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 no. God gave this to me. Why? Because the word says that he who began a good work of me will complete the day of Jesus Christ. He said it. You know, God started, he's going to finish it, right? And so the devil, that's faith is the only faith in God's word. The devil ain't got no answer for it. So I've been in corporate America for what, 20 years, doing well, right? And so that's what he come for me. And guess what? I, I, hey, look, I, hey, look, it's written, bam. He, he got to back off. Amen. So that's why we're doing this, all right? So let's go ahead and get into the Word of God. Look, we've been talking about this. The second week of talking about long-suffering, right? And long-suffering is different from te temperance. Is like, okay, I'm putting up with something. I'm putting up with people. I ain't going to go off today. Uh, you know, I used to cut you, but I'm, I'm, I might cuss a little bit, but it's better than getting cut, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Huh? Huh? I used to slit your tires when I go check your phone and see so-and-so. Baby mama still, oh, okay. You know, but I ain't going to do that. I'm going to roll my eyes, but I'm getting better. Right? <laughs> I can tell you, I got an aunt out there called Willa May. She got a gold tooth and a 83 years old and got a gun. Right? <laughs> so you can deal with her either way. <laughs> but you ain't going you ain't, you ain't, you ain't to say too much. I love you, Aunt Willa May, but you ain't going to, you know, ain't too much you're going to say to her now because she'll cock, 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 you know. <laughs> We're still praying for her, right? And so guess what we're talking about? Long-suffering, temperance is putting up with people. Long-suffering is putting up situations or, or, or allowing God to work the process in you, right? Yeah. Some things going to take longer than others, but it don't mean God ain't answered your prayer, mm -hmm. right? It just means that it's going to take a little while yeah. to get stuff lined up, to get hearts lined up, to move people out the way, to get you out of the way. God can answer. I didn't, how many you know God can do you, make your business successful right now? God can heal your body right now, but he got to get all that other stuff lined up. Because some of y'all, if God healed your body, well, you'd be on, you go, you're going to be on Facebook with a bikini. You're going to be, you know, butt poke guy. <laughs> huh? You're going to be DM. You're going to go back with your boyfriend, Larry. You know, <laughs> Larry ain't got to, ain't, 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 ain't paying no attention. But all of a sudden, the pictures come out. You're like, girl, I, love, I made a mistake, you know. You know, you know, <laughs> they're going to be, they know, brothers, when they're desperate, they know how to apologize. Right. <laughs> we got that right. When we, want, when we want certain things. We know how to apologize. Right. Well, we get to cry and all kind of other stuff, man. You know, huh? If you look right. And so God, <laughs> so God got to prepare that, you know, some of you, boy, if y'all had a million dollars, man, ain't gonna, boy, Magic City, boy, be, they, <laughs> they'd be franchising that place. Right. <laughs> so he got to get you right. So he got to get all that other stuff right first. Amen. So that long suffering is allowing God to to work out the things in your inside because he can change the inside. He can change the outside just like that. He's working on your inside to get you ready for the wife, for the husband. So that guess what? You don't have a wandering eye and get knocked out. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. First lady said, Harry. OK, yeah, yeah. And so we're on to part two. This series is called what? The stretch series, the stretch series. Right. And this sermon is called It's Good for Me. The word of God is called, it's, it's good for me. The, the, the message for the, the title of the message today is called, it's good for me. So you turn your Bibles and guess what? If you don't turn now, we'll do it for Bible study. Amen. Yeah. So we got to move. First Peter chapter five, verse eight through 12. First Peter, New Testament. First Peter chapter five, verse 12. And we're talking about long suffering. And it's a part of that series called stretch. This is how God stretches you. What God can't stretch you in two days because you'll, you'll snap. He got to apply pressure and just kind of increase it as you stretch and you can handle more. That's right. That's right. I want a business, but you got a bad temper. So God got to get that first so you ain't cussing people out at the job. Amen. Huh? Yeah. He got to get your flesh under suggestion so you ain't sued for sexual harassment because you <laughs> ain't nobody go to the water fountain. You the creepy dude at the water fountain. You know, <laughs> you at the coffee thing, you staring people down the hall. Like, I feel like I'm being watched. You the creepy dude. You Larry. Right? <laughs> so God, God got to get that out of the way. So when you get something, you're not an embarrassment to the kingdom. Amen. First Peter, hallelujah. And that, but guess what? God still loves us. Guess what? God still loves us in spite of all our imperfections. Right? That don't mean God don't love you, but look at your name and say God's preparing you. Amen. 
Amen. So it's so that you, what you want don't destroy you. Right. Be sober minded, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. God is warning you, right? Yes, he is. And so he, God, the devil knows your doors. He know what tick you off. He know that you freaky. He know that you got a, a bad temper. He know that saint, you know. Like I said before, well, you, you, I got the joy of the Lord. I got the love of God. Then your ex boyfriend your ex husband Clarence show up at the grocery store with somebody that's twenty two years old, look better than you, and and want to shake your hand and say, "Let's buy gonna be buy He still owe you child support. <laughs> you gonna be mad as fire, right? The devil know where to get you, right? The devil know where to get you, right? Verse nine, and, and so guess what now? So what? Whom he who we resist steadfast in the faith, knowing the same afflictions were accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So the devil attacks who? People who are following Christ. So don't think it's strange when you're having drama, when you're having conflict, you can't get up for church, you can't make your ends meet at times. You got people that used to be your friends don't want to talk about you, talk with you now. Why? Because you changed. Even though you don't feel it, your spirit is changing. The devil can say, like, oh, shoot. You know, I thought I had her. I thought I had him. Amen. And because of that now, you're going to have a fight. You're going to have affliction. Amen. So don't go around acting like you wonder where, where did all this stuff come from? Why everybody mad at me? Why the boss doing that? Why? Because you're doing something. Maybe could it be that you're not doing something wrong? You might be doing something right. Amen. Amen. Verse 10, but, the, but this is what I want to get to. But the God of all grace, whom you have called unto eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have what? So. Suffered a while. That's in the Bible. God ordained suffering. After you have what suffered a while, Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ, after you suffer a while, who's going to do it? God is going to make you or Christ is going to make you perfect and establish you and strengthen you and settle you. Why? What? By suffering. Long suffering breeds character in you. What is it going to do? It's going to increase your prayer life. It's going to it's going to make you consistent in certain things. You go, hey, 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 guess what? Now you you're going to get hurt about, uh, long enough, and that suffering, <laughs> suffering, flicking sometimes. So we like, nah, I give up. You know, she ain't no good for me. You're right. Every every time she take my car, she wreck it. <laughs> but she fine, Lord. <laughs> huh? That the Lord said, take back. I'm going to cure him of that. <laughs> go on, let him take the let him take the wallet one more time. Go on, <laughs> huh? <laughs> go on. Yes. Huh? Her hair down her back, Lord. Yeah, go on. He ain't, he ain't learned yet. Go on. <laughs> Let her wreck it again. Right? Yes. Huh? <laughs> right? And then some of you at over 40 have lived long enough to say, yeah, I learned my lesson. <laughs> mm -hmm. Huh? I learned my lesson. Huh? I, I used to look for, you know, you used to look for muscles in a six pack and he said, girl, he got green eyes, girl. You know, huh? next thing you know, your debit card gone. <laughs> like, what happened? <laughs> huh? You cured from that now. Huh? <laughs> so you see some mature women in the church. They mature not just because they old, because they done made some mistakes. Like, no, you're right. That was stupid. I'm <laughs> I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> I'm minding my bit. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna, I might glance, but I ain't gonna stare like, mm, no, I don't want no problems, right? <laughs> uh, uh, mm. you, you know, when you get old enough, you stare, but then you look and see if they're taking a bus or if they actually got a car. <laughs> they got a bus. Like, no, girl, no. Uh, I have been there, what? It's like, been there, what? Done that. <laughs> uh, I ain't trying to get let nobody borrow my car while I'm working. Nope. <laughs> that's a young girl, that's a young girl mistake, right? <laughs> Amen. So guess what? That's what it do. Some of that stuff give you experience. Right. And so guess what? Wisdom sometimes come from experience. We want wisdom. We want wisdom in like a second. We glad just hand, lay hands on me. Lay, me. lay your hands on me, Jesus. Well, I don't mind. Right? Lay hands. But some of that come from life experience from walking. It out. Look at your neighbor and say, walk it out. Walk Some things you're going to hawk or walk out. Yes. Right. Amen. And long suffering is one of them things. I can't lay hands on you, give you long suffering. I'm working on it too. Amen. You got to walk that out. Look at your name and say it's a process. And you can't shortcut that. Some things you're going to have to go through. Some things you're going to have to. God ain't going to save you from every bit of pain, every bit of tear, because there's a lesson in it. God, where you at? Why did you let so-and-so do that? He tried to tell you to leave her, <laughs> but you didn't want to. So she took your car and wrecked it again. 
Huh? He tried to say she wasn't, he wasn't good for you. So every time you wake up, the, 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 the debit card gone. Oh, dog. <laughs> He tried, to, she, he tried to tell you, but we don't want to hear, so we got to go walk, what, walk it out. Right. Amen. Some lessons aren't taught, they're caught. Mm. Amen. Mm. So God has to say, guess what? Some things that you want God to pray for and God, you want God to deliver you, God telling me to tell you buckle up. He's doing it, but he got to work some things out of you. It ain't a bad thing because guess what? God going to be with you in it because guess what it said here? That last part says what? He says, it, it, it says verse 10, but the God of all grace and glory whom has called us unto eternal glory by, by eternal glory by Jesus Christ. What? After you suffered a while, make you pray. Who's going to do it? Christ is going to do it after you suffered a while. So he's going to be with you in the process. Amen. He's going to be with you in the process. You got to embrace it because God's going to, it's not going to destroy you. It's not going to kill you. It's going to make you what better. This is, look at your name and say, this is good for me. This is good. Amen. I'm going to learn God's what you got is not mad at you. Amen. But some things have to be worked out. It's a process. And we, we want, guess what? Now we want God to be a microwave God, but he's not, he's a crock pot God. So we got to get, we got to keep moving. We got, yeah, we cry. We lift our hands and say, I love you, Lord God. I'm going to show up anyway. I'm going to show up for the problem. Why? Because I don't want this to end this way. And so many people now, well, that's what we call shipwrecked faith. When guess what? They abandon long suffering because it's taking too long. And so guess what? We leave before the promise happens. Could it be that God's taking so long, mama? Guess why? Because he's trying to protect you because you're not ready for it yet. So he loves you so much that he don't want you to go there and make it worse. He can't give you a million dollars and you still, you just got off crack three weeks, three weeks ago. What's going to happen? You know? He can't do it. You know what I'm saying? So he loves you too much. So he'll give you a limited budget so you can just, why am I just struggling? Why? He's trying to keep you out of that. So he just got to give you your daily bread because he loves you too much. He don't want to lose you. How many people you know came into a lot of money and lost their mind? Huh? Died because they wrecked the car that they got. And I'm almost done with it. But I had a young man I grew up with. He got an insurance settlement and got a brand new car. He went out and raced the car and had a car accident and died. How many lottery people getting up, winning the lottery and getting a divorce? Their family's wrecked. God's trying to prepare you. How does he do that? He stretches you. He gives you long suffering. He gradually brings you there and gives you what you can handle and can't destroy you. How many of y'all have had children? All of y'all, y'all, you seem like mothers. You better not. But, you know, the three of y'all seem like mothers, right? And guess what? You didn't give your children no, at, at no six months old, no piece of chicken because they had choke on it. Right? You, you give them barely food. You give them milk. Then you give them a little take. You give them a little uh, vegetables and fruit. And if you give them meat, then you mash it down a little bit and give them a little bit for them little nubs. Right? Don't stick your finger in there. <laughs> a kill better not. <laughs> you know? Them little things are sharp. But guess what now? You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. Okay, let's go to the takeaways here. But guess what? Long suffering, I, I always thought it was something bad like patience. Mm. I always thought, I, guess what? When I heard long suffering, all I heard was what? Suffering. Mm. <laughs> all I heard was suffering. Mm. Yeah? I didn't hear the long part. I, and, and, no, I heard the long part, but I heard, okay, it's going to be a long time of suffering. But it wasn't that. It's God working stuff. And guess what? We embrace it. It can be a pleasurable peace because that's your intimacy with God. Teach you how to pray. You're seeing God's faithfulness. It don't mean you're just going to suffer every day, right? It just means that what you're wanting, the deliverance is taking a little bit longer. And if you submit to that process, guess what? It can be joyful. Amen. Let's go to the takeaways here. Y'all so proud of me, ain't you? Look. Hmm? Takeaway one. It takes the Holy Spirit to be long suffering. You can't do it in your flesh because guess what? Your mind going to tell you it's not working. God forgot about you. Take it in your hand. How long are you going to put up with that? 
How long you gonna put up with that at your job? How long you gonna, you know, be broke? Do this shortcut over here. Go sell this. Go do that. Go write this check. Go do because you, you, you're supposed to have some money. You got to do a shortcut and then make your life worse. Right. It takes the Holy Spirit to say, no, I got I don't know why, but I should be panicking. But I got peace that passes all understanding. Amen. That's the Holy Spirit. I don't know why. But the old song said, I got a feeling everything's going to be, be all right. The Holy Spirit will settle you. When you get the, when you get in trouble, you get the and you're stirring that up, and guess what happens now? You're getting peace. Your spirit is settling you, and then what? After you're praying a while, you'll get what happened. The Holy Spirit will, and you're like, man, I don't know why that peace came. And I, it's like we call it in the spirit a check in the spirit. When you get a check in your spirit, you don't know how to answer, but you know it's going to be all right. Yes, and old folks used to call it. We call it praying through. Praying through things, praying through that. We're going to do a series on the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's not a spooky piece, but you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be have what we call a prayer language. So when you're in trouble, it can settle you and give you that peace that you're trying to work it. You're trying to get mental peace, but God's saying you need peace on the inner man. You need inner peace. And it only comes by the Holy Spirit being filled with the Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 says this. That then he answered, this guy said, Then he answered uh, uh, and spake, saying unto me, uh, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, What? Not by might, nor by power, but what? By my spirit, says the Lord. Long suffering can be to the point. It's been the devil just pounding you with certain things that you are trying to get it in other ways. You need, and guess what? God's trying to push you to get the Holy Spirit. So when you get the answer to prayer, you'll be able to pray and have a prayer to keep your, the, 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 the pray over uh, that vision God gave you. How many of you know when you give birth to a child, that's just the beginning. That ain't the end. You don't just say, oh, okay, I gave birth. Okay, bye. No, that's just the beginning. Yeah, that's right. Huh? Mm -hmm. I talked to my 21-year-old daughter. We have lunch. Every time we have lunch, it's a cash out. Hey, Dad. And yeah, she looks just like me, a little teeth sticking out like all right, Hannah, what you want? <laughs> Dad and father, and you can't say nothing because she got your eyes. You know? They know where to get you, especially with me and them girls. I'm like, God. You know? Because you don't want another man to give it to them. No, uh-uh. The devil is a lie. Come to me. Now, I'm going to fuss, but no, I don't know to no other dude. I ain't going to jail, but I will. <laughs> don't tell. I'm 5'8", I'm but don't test me. Dondre, don't. I'm just, <laughs> Dad will go to jail over his daughter in a minute. Don't do it. Right? And so, yeah. And so that's it. You need the Holy Spirit. We're going to begin to teach on that and begin to minister on being filled with the Holy Spirit and having a prayer language. Because guess what? If you don't have that, you're not prepared for what God answered, what you're asking God for. Because you cannot handle the spiritual warfare that's going to come. The devil don't want you having money and giving to the church so other people get saved. So he's like, okay, well, that's your hole. You don't have a prayer line. You don't know how the Holy Spirit. I'm going to get you. Huh? He know where it is, whether it's Mr. Muscles, Mrs. Shape, whether it's money, whether it's, it's uh, temper. He know where to get. He know where that door is. Amen. Take away two. Look at your name and say, it takes the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need a prayer language. My wife see me wake up with, where am I at, baby? I'm getting loud. Where am I every morning? That prayer room's praying in the spirit. That's how I start my day every day. Take away two. I know you don't want to hear it, but write it down. <laughs> huh? Suffering purifies your motives towards God. What? Because guess what? When it's hard, people want to leave. And so you know now, am I doing this for money? Am I doing this for fame? Am I doing this to get my business right? Am I doing this because I'm in trouble? Am I doing this because I love God? Because guess what now? Sometimes serving God ain't going to pay out the way you think it is. Some things you're going to get in heaven. Sometimes serving God will get what we'll call you're going to lose some stuff. I don't do that now because, you know, I'm going to say that for my husband. I don't do that now. I, you know, I don't cuss like this. Now, I'm not going to laugh and pick at people like I used to at work. 
I'm not going to be a troublemaker no more. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm really try to live this thing out. So I'm going to do the work. I'm going to pray for those who, well, you ain't going to get them back. You know what they did to you? Girl, you soft. Boy, you soft. No, Bible said I'm going to turn you on. I forgive you. And you're going to lose some folks. You're talking funny. You know what I'm saying? Because you used to be the first one in the parking lot. You know, what's happened to you? Well, I can't relate to you. You tripping. You know? What you crying for? You used to didn't cry like that. You used to be, you know, <laughs> and women in ATL, they do more. <laughs> they, <laughs> they box better than us. <laughs> huh? Amen. Right. And so guess what? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. Let's go ahead and move here. It says here, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness those 40 years mm -hmm. to, guess what, humble you and test you. That's right. That's what it was for. Hmm? in order to know what was in your what heart, whether you would keep his commandments. God, everybody get tested. You ain't too good to get tested. Jesus was tested, and he God. You think you, you ain't Jesus? You seen your toes? You ain't Jesus? Don't think. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tavia. <laughs> so, Tavia. <you. laughs> you know what I'm saying? We ain't Jesus. You smelt your breath before you brush your teeth. You ain't. You definitely ain't Jesus. Yeah, my wife would tell you I ain't Jesus, huh? Right? <laughs> that ain't that funny, but still. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We think we better than Jesus, right? <laughs> we gonna humble some people around here so God will test you. I can do all things through Christ who, strength, who strengthens me. You know, we ain't gonna say strength, who strengthens me. You know, all this other stuff. I got gold as the girl. I walk in love. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field. You know how we do? We get to twitch, huh? Then God, and you think God is, is happy, but get God gonna look down here and say, prove it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I forgave Clarence. I ain't nothing he can do. I got the Holy Ghost. Because every time he come, and huh? He come up in Publix, huh? Girl, that boy still owe me some money back from 1985. Yeah? Child, so look at him walking around. He got a brand new, I can't believe it, a brand new cat. Look at him. Hmm. I ought to go slap, I ought to go get him right now. I'm going to take the roots out of that girl hair right there. Look at her. Her little light skin. So, huh? <laughs> Child, hello, you know? I want to take the roots out of her hair right now. You know? <laughs> I'm going to beat her down, right? <laughs> but there's cameras in the parking lot, so you can't do that. Amen? <laughs> huh? Oh, well, guess what? God going to tell you to prove it, right? And how many of you say you're going to be tested? So guess what? God, and it ain't because God don't trust you to show you where you are, to tell you you're not ready. Because he, guess what? He don't want to bring you somewhere and you lose it. He don't want to give you a new spouse and then you lose it. Why? Because you don't know how to say, I'm sorry. You don't mean it. You're manipulative. Hmm? You with the prettiest woman God could give you, and you, your eyes still, you bending over back. Well, look at this stuff. You know? God can't do that because God don't want to hurt her or you. Amen? God, give me a wife, and you stingy. You know, you got <laughs> women. <laughs> Lord, I ain't going to say that, but <laughs> they ha <they>, ha <laughs> I'm trying to say it, so I got to go home. <laughs> huh? But women, they cost. Huh? They don't want to get their hair done. They ain't going to spend their stuff. The devil is a liar. Care if they got a job or not. Huh? <laughs> they check H.O. check. Huh? Let's right. we'll talk about the men's conference. I don't want to get in trouble. We outnumber here, so. <laughs> I'm just laughing at you thinking, okay, it's going to be 50-50. And my check, we're going to just put it all together. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna see how that works. <laughs> uh oh, first lady getting quiet. Let me calm down because I gotta eat. Keep. She said, "Keep moving." <laughs> she looked me dead in the eye. She said, "Keep moving." Oh Lord, help me. Pray for me. Okay, take away three. Take away three, y'all. Man, I'm sweating. I don't know why. <laughs> Suffering purges your friends. <laughs> And Gina didn't say nothing. She ain't helping me with <laughs> blood thicker. I, I got you. I just, that's, that's how we going to do. That's how we moving today. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> Suffering purges your friends. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Suffering purges your friends. What that mean? When you're in trouble, your real friends going to stay and them fake ones going to leave talking about you. Amen. Amen. Like what does that mean? 
Hashtag, stop chasing people that God is chasing away. You're trying to hold on to folks. Amen. And God trying to show you who they really are. They were talking about you when you had money, but they're just louder now. Proverbs 17, 17 says this, and we're almost there. It says this, a friend loves at all times. Guess what? But a brother and a brother is born out of what? Adversity. God wants you to have a church family. It might not be blood, but guess what happens now? Suffering will expose your, your, your um, enemies and your brothers and sisters. That's why God will leave you in it for a while to clear out all the riffraff. You ever seen how storms happen and it, it takes all the dead branches and leaves off, but the strong live ones stay standing? Look at them and say, I'm still standing. Take away four. Take away four. And this is a long one, but write it down. God is the guy. You know you can rewind this. God is the God of perfect timing. God is stretching you. He is getting you ready for the blessing. We talked about that before. God don't ever bring anybody to their destination unprepared. David was anointed, and he spent, uh, as, a, as a 17-year-old, he spent 13 years running from Saul, long-suffering. Look at they say long-suffering before he got the crown on. There's a difference between being anointed and being crowned. You got plenty of people that's anointed and went ahead of God before getting crowned, and they messing up churches, doing all kind of other stuff because they went ahead of the process. Look at the name, say it's a process. God, look at it one more time. Say, God is stretching you. God is stretching you. So guess what? Now, just because you're anointed, don't mean you're ready. Mm -hmm. I was anointed to do this 20 years ago. I'm still looking where I'm at, huh? <laughs> Dealing with y'all. <laughs> God knows I had a patience problem. <laughs> I'd have been that went off and threw some chairs, but I'm saved now, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, fire baptized, and still getting delivered right now. Huh? <laughs> Amen? Amen? Shoot. When you get a wife, that's, that's going to gonna help with your deliverance. Don't worry about that. You're going to get delivered. <laughs> huh? <laughs> and when you're real stubborn, they're going to bring mama to us and be tag team. You know, good way you did that wrong over here. You need to fix. <laughs> God, but it's taking, I, I, I got a schedule to keep. No, I need, she needs some help. Look, Galatians 6, 9. Amen. <laughs> I love my mom. I'm a sweet boy. So, so. I'm saying, but y'all for the stubborn ones now. For the stubborn ones. I ain't stubborn like that. You know, I like to believe. Right? The kill over there laughing, so I don't know how true that is. Okay. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. This is encouragement for you. Yes, Don't is. get weary and well doing because you're so focused. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, tell me, tell you, you're so focused on getting there that the journey, you're forgetting about the journey. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? You need to celebrate the, the, the little successes that you got. Yes. Learn to celebrate the baby steps. Learn to celebrate. You know what? My credit bad, but I paid that bill this time. Hallelujah. <laughs> huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. You know, I missed two car payments, but I got I still I'm still driving. Hey, you know, I, uh, look, I got some gas money today. That's a success. That's a success. But what's happening now, you know why you demolish? You're trying to get all the way to millionaire steps and not celebrating the baby steps. I used to be in the negative three days after getting paid, but guess what? I got 20, but I ain't, I ain't broke. I ain't, you know, that's a step. You know what I'm saying? I used to have to call uh, to, a month ago to call to get my lights bill extended and say this, but guess what? I got it. It's tight, but I got, and I'm getting better. And guess what happened now? And then uh, the, two months later, then it's even better than that. Yeah, yeah. You got, look at your neighbor and say, enjoy, enjoy. your journey. Enjoy. Because what happened now, guess what? It might take five years to get where you at, and then you done lost five years, a, a, a chance growing up, all that other stuff now, and you got what you want, and you miserable. You in that mansion by yourself because you didn't spend time with no time with your kids because all you were worried about is getting to the mansion. And all you got is baby picture. You missed all of it. And I was almost like that. I was so I was wanting to succeed in corporate America so, man, and I was almost, I missed juniors two or first two or three years. I said, hold on now. 
I was there, but my body was there, but my mind was on this. And I told you what happened when my baby girl, Hannah, I was on a conference call one time. She came and said, Daddy, look at this. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, Bill, what do you want? You know? And then what Hannah did is she, she, she reached her little hands up and grabbed my face like this and went, look at me. And I hung that conference call up quicker than you know what I said. Yes, baby. <laughs> you can be missing it because you worried about trying to get there. Because the devil thinks it's going to be some promised land, and you're thinking, like, like Solomon said, I did all that stuff, and it was all vanity. Solomon got all that stuff at the end of his life, he said, it's all vanity. I missed the birthday party. I missed the kiss. I didn't get to look in Bonnie's eyes like I wanted to and say this right here and count the freckles, you know? Huh? And now when I say I love you, say, yeah, whatever. You know? <laughs> like, hey, baby, no, uh -uh. we danced a little. We danced in the public parking lot last night. I paid some guy, some organ guy, what, the little, little gypsy guy. And we just danced. We almost got hit, but we, I was like, come here, baby. He was playing John Legend, all of me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we almost got hit by, you know, somebody with some pork chops, but hey. <laughs> I was like, no, she said, that's so romantic, you know. We was in there just dancing, paid the little organ guy, put that little $20 in this little guitar case, and we just say, come here, baby. Mm -hmm. Enjoy, look at your neighbor, say, enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't be the one that's crying over mama's casket, huh, and you live five minutes down the road and won't say nothing to her. And I was like, yeah, oh, Lord, oh, you know. I told you about the Walker funerals. I told you there's a funeral home won't even deal with us now because we cut up. What, the one we were at four, four months ago, they started a, park, a fight in the parking lot, didn't they? That five in a row, five things, and I'm glad Gina went, because Gina would have smoked somebody, you know. Hey, what you coming with my what? <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, she loves us now. <laughs> I'm like, no, don't do it. <laughs> I said, like, you don't want to do that because Bonnie got some people right down the road. This high point, too. They can get here in 30 minutes. You want to calm down? <laughs> you better calm your behind down. Please don't let them Lattimore show up. Don't do it. <laughs> You're going to have a bad day. <laughs> let me go. I love you. I ain't no, you know, don't come here, please. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. I'm your friend now. Because they'll burn some gas to get you. <laughs> huh? Long suffering. We're talking about long suffering. I'm sorry about that rabbit trail, baby. Let's go. This is the last one now, y'all. All right. Long. This is it. Long. Long suffering. Take away five. Long suffering gives you a testimony to tell the nations. God trying to work on your story. So when you meet that woman in the grocery store that don't have this, you can say, yeah, I, had, I was that way too. You can meet somebody who's got wayward children and say, yeah, I had that. Just hang on in there. And when you say it, it ain't just some empty cliche. You've been there. I'm tired of people trying to give me advice. They ain't never suffered or nothing. Ain't never been through nothing and came through it. But it means a lot. You don't have to have no THD. You don't have to have no doctrine. But if you can say, hey, let, because so-and-so, I had this problem. But guess what happened to me? I was in drugs, but God delivered me. I was in debt, too. That's why cats like Dave Ramsey are so successful, because he was there. And then he's able to get out. That's why people listen to the cat, not because he's he real smart, but guess what? People don't listen to trust fund babies. They listen to the guy. They listen to Lazarus. That's why Jesus let him die and let him stink that fourth day and then get him back up. Yes. Long suffering. Could it be that God ain't using long suffering for you? He's trying to get your story and your testimony together. I told you, preachers, that you're being raised up, evangelists, whoever else. God doesn't need your, uh, yeah, knowledge of Scripture is good, but he ain't just using that. He's going to give you a Scripture, then he's going to go to your testimony. Yes. Your testimony is stronger than all that other revelation stuff. Amen. That's what people listen to is what God brought you out of. So you got to look at the name and say, walk it out. God needs, God trusts you with suffering so you can walk it out and then go tell everybody the story of how God brought you out. God trusts that he will not lose you. And write that down. God trusts that he will not lose you in the process. God can't trust everybody with suffering. And so they can't get a better reward out of it. Every Tyler Perry, whoever you see that you look at, they went through some stuff. 
And so every time you see him, he's, he's talking about what God brought him through. The Steve Harvey's, the Tyler Perry's of the world. I want to have the, but you don't want to go through the same. You don't want to live in your car either, do you? That's a part of so, but guess what? That's what makes you lean in when he starts talking about, I slept in my car, and this is what happened. I prayed to God, and Tyler Perry talking about all this time, I went through all this stuff, and I lost that money, and then all of a sudden now, the last play, uh, these people are walking around, and God said, be quiet and look outside. That took years of long what? Suffering. Failure after failure after heartbreak, and you're thinking it ain't going to happen. We read about Abraham waiting 20-something years for a child. Hannah waiting and couldn't have a baby for Samuel to come later on in life. Joseph languishing in slavery for 13 years. 13 years. Only so that we can read about what he did and be strengthened with it and say, I can do God's coming. He, I don't know when he's coming. Well, that's what old folks say. He may not come when he wants want you to want him to, but what? He's right. On the, they didn't just say that. They knew what they were talking about. They lived it out. Our parents went through more, much worse than what we did. They had to believe this stuff. They had no health care all of that time. They had to believe it or, or, or not survive. This is it. Revelations 2, 12 and 11 says this. Revelation 12 and 11, it says, and what? They, at the end, they overcame him and they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb, which is Jesus, and the word of their what? Testimony. I told you before, one of the greatest ministry pictures we had when Sister Gina held the hand of that lady. It's powerful because of the way the response that lady looked up at her. The story behind that's amazing. I'll never forget that. I believe that was our first revival, wasn't it? And that lady just looked up at her. And Gina grabbed her hands. I got you. Right? A testimony meets somebody with a need. Amen. Amen. Look at your name and say, wait on the Lord. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. God is trying to work your story, but you quit before he can bring you out so that everybody can say it. You think you got to trust God's faithfulness. Old folks used to say this. I want you to remember this. Repeat after me. If he if he found me, he can keep me. If you don't know, look one more time. If he found me, he can keep me. The Holy Ghost is a keeper. God got you in his hand. If he found you, he will, he will keep you. He look at your neighbor and look at your, and you can just open your hand and imagine you in God's hand. God, if he found you, he can, he can keep you. This is not going to destroy you. God has got you. Mm-hmm. Old folks used to say that. Mama, you remember that, don't you? If he found you, he can keep you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need, look at this hand, you need to jump in God's hand. What they used to say, his what, unchanging what? Hand. Go ahead and sing that, baby, please. God's unchanging hand, oh, hold to his hand. I'm singing it. God's unchanging hand, hold to his hand. Come on. Now. Come on, one more time, baby. God's unchanging hand. Come on, man. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Feel the things eternal. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and fill me with your Holy Spirit, and I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey, look, if you prayed that, angels rejoicing over what you did. Go and write us for a Bible if you got. Attend the service at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on the broadcast. And then seven, uh, on Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern Sunday, 7, 8, 7 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. Keep the word in you. Even if you can't be at the facility at 107 Technology Parkway in Peachtree Corners, Georgia, 30092, slow it down to YouTube. <laughs> Guess what now? You can still come and get the word online. You need the word. Keep filling your spirit with the word. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for strength, Lord God. Father, encourage them today. I join my faith with yours, Lord God. And I ask you to encourage the flock that you've assigned us to, Lord God. Give them strength. Lord God, blow upon their weary bones, Lord God. You said you give power to the faint. And those who have no might, Lord, you increase their strength, Lord God. We ask you to increase their strength for the journey, Lord God. Lord God, and strengthen and let them see the end of it, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, look, this is your pastor, Dr. Charles C. Lucas, saying what? Y'all better say it. Keep, Keep moving. Me. Come on now.